Hey, this is Nico from Licks of the Beast, and like many of you, I am absolutely over the moon with Iron Maiden's announcement of the upcoming Future Past tour in 2023. Now, I've been a fan of the band for a long time, and I always get super excited when they release a new album or when they start a new tour. But I've got to say, this is the best news I've ever heard from them, other than when they announced the return of Bruce and Adrian in 1999. As some of you know, Somewhere in Time is my all-time favorite Iron Maiden album. And I'll talk about it at length in a future video, but suffice it to say that I find Somewhere in Time to be a truly unique album for the band. There's an entirely different songwriting style with different vocal melodies. Dave and Adrian took a much different approach to the guitar in the riffs, the arrangements, and the solos. And of course, much has been said over the years about the Somewhere in Time sound, with its guitar synths, saturated tone, and the heavy use of the chorus effect. Senjutsu is another album I really enjoy, and I haven't stopped listening to it since its release last year. This one is a unique sounding album as well, although not quite as much as Somewhere in Time, but there are some similarities between the two albums. Not so much musically, as their latest album is considerably more complex, especially in terms of arrangement and textures, but there is a dreamlike veil that permeates the entire album from the opening taiko drums of the title track to the fade out of Hell on Earth. Listening to this album is like being transported to a separate world, and I feel the same way about Somewhere in Time. The only other albums that really do this to the same extent are probably Seventh Son of a Seventh Son and A Matter of Life and Death. So in that sense, combining these two albums in one tour makes perfect sense. So why call it the Future Past Tour? The obvious reason is that one album is set in a Blade Runner-like future, while the other is set in the historical past of feudal Japan. But there is a deeper meaning to this tour and its name. The band is looking back at a very special moment in their career, the mid-1980s, where the world was collectively looking towards the future. Everything was futuristic, Science fiction and technology were on everyone's minds, and many movies were set in the future. Iron Maiden did not record the Somewhere in Time tour, and Steve Harris has regretted it ever since. So Iron Maiden, from the future, are going back to that time to fix that in a way. But also, they are looking back at an important point in their career 36 years ago. They will be acknowledging that moment in time and giving it the recognition it duly deserves, but they're not going to be stuck there, because with Senjutsu, the band seems to be looking towards the future. Because it's not the present past tour, it's the future past tour. So I'm looking at it like Senjutsu is the starting point of Iron Maiden's future. There's also something really cool about the fact that the album from the past was looking far ahead towards the future, and the album from the future, from the past's point of view, is looking way back into the distant past. So what do I think the set list is going to look like? Well, as someone pointed out, in the announcement video there is a scoreboard showing Samurai 5, Cyborg 5. So it's plausible that they will be doing five songs from each album, then Iron Maiden to close the set, and the encores would be some classics like The Trooper, Hallowed Be Thy Name, and Number of the Beast. The question, of course, is which five songs from each album will they pick? My guess would be From Somewhere in Time, Caught Somewhere in Time, Wasted Years, Heaven Can Wait, Stranger in a Strange Land, and finally, after making fans wait patiently for 36 years, Alexander the Great. From Senjutsu, the title track Senjutsu, Stratego, Writing on the Wall, Days of Future Past, since it's the name of the tour, and Hell on Earth, because it's a great song that seems to be everyone's favorite. I wonder if they'll take the opportunity to do a revamped Walking on Glass with three guitars. Because that would be absolutely amazing. It would really showcase the band's three different guitar styles, and that harmony part with a third guitar would be just huge. And what about the stage set? I have a feeling this is going to be mind-blowingly epic, even by Iron Maiden standards. 
The front cover of Somewhere in Time and the inside cover of Senjutsu are probably their two best in terms of design and artwork. So I'm imagining something set in a futuristic Tokyo, more so than it already is if you can imagine that, juxtaposed with some ancient structures like pagodas, castles, or temples. And I have a feeling the light show is going to be out of this world. The Cyborg and Samurai are my two favorite eddies. So having them both walk out on stage is going to be so great. And I wonder if they're going to have each one come out on a different song, or if they're going to come out at the same time and maybe battle it out. To a draw, of course. I'm also hoping for the Cyborg Eddie head and hands from underneath the drums, like in the original Somewhere in Time tour. And by now, they have it down to a fine art, so I'm sure they won't have any of the technical difficulties that they had with the inflatables on the original tour. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that, because I always thought that was the most awesome looking thing ever. Overall, it's so great to see my all-time favorite band acknowledging its history and all their accomplishments, but not dwelling on them or resting on their laurels. They remain a creative force and a band that still has a lot to say. And as a fan of 35 years, I feel exceptionally fortunate and I'm beyond stoked for this tour. So let's keep the conversation going in the comments section. Are you excited? Are you planning on seeing a show and where? Which cities do you think they'll announce next? Sarah and I are still deciding, but we're thinking London would be pretty awesome, especially since we had such a great time there earlier this year and we can't wait to go back. Although, if they announce Tokyo, that might be the ultimate concert travel experience ever. Thank you so much for allowing me to share my excitement with you and stay tuned for more licks of the beast.